one last thought. You may be wondering why these chairs are here, um, or maybe you figured it out. When the screens go here, we can no longer have these little benches up there. So uh, assistant ministers and your presiding ministers will get to sit in the, in the pews with, with everybody, which is great. Um, but property and I, we really don't have any idea where to put these eventually when we start meeting at the rail. So if you have ideas, please share those with the property team. So, blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, whose love is endless. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. But first, let's take a moment for silent confession and reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father and Holy Spirit, and by Christ's very own authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. Amen. Uh, Mary here is doing like triple duty, quadruple duty this morning, so thank you very much. Uh, Kinsey Lintel, who is going to be our singer, um, is in COVID quarantine, so we should add her to our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear ye, O Son, on the world and on the way. Hear ye, O Son, every day. For peace in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all, for this holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. That we may live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor. That we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear ye, O Son, on the world and on our way. Hear ye, O Son, every day. For peace in our hearts, for peace in our homes, for friends and family, for life and for love, for our work and our play, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear ye, O Son, on the world and on our way. For your spirit to guide, that you center our lives in the water and the word, that you nourish our souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. To get used to turning on this mic and turning off this mic instead of muting it because it makes a really horrible sound when you mute it. So we're going to do a little something a little bit different here, or it's going to sound a little different today for our our piece. So as usual, folks, that here's what doesn't change: that Christ lives and is among us now, and that Jesus has promised that wherever even two or three are gathered in His name, then He's there among them also. So if you're here in the name of Christ Jesus, then I will invite you to stand up in a moment and share a greeting with your neighbor. 
So we will have three verses of a whole song to, to share this piece. So uh, greet each other, offer each other's peace to whoever's near you or even from afar. You can wave, you can have a conversation. Uh, you know, we should avoid the handshake still and the hugging and all that, but elbow bumps are probably okay again, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, but go, take this moment and let's have a little bit of fellowship. So, peace to you all. And God's peace to you uh, who are worshiping outdoors and online and across space and time. Um, just know Christ's peace is with you today. song has been a new ad for Wednesday and now today and Anne just sings it so beautifully. Thank you Anne for that. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray the prayer of the day together. O oh God, our teacher and God, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading today is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 11, verses 18 through 20. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew that you showed me their evil deeds, led to slaughter, that they devised schemes, saying, Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. Who try the heart and the mind, for to you I have committed my cause. Here ends our reading. The psalm today is Psalms 54. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ears to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, Destroy them. I will offer you a free sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye looks down on my enemies. The second reading today is taken from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 13, through chapter 4, verse 3, and then 7 and 8. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your work is done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, 
Do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to the yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and you cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly. In order to spend what you get on your pleasures, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Here ends our reading. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark in the ninth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. So Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But the disciples did not understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they, were, they argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down and called the twelve and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all the servants of all. Uh, sorry, let me read that again. Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, taking it in his arms and said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This here is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Okay, um, hold on for a moment. So if I feel, if I sound a little muffled outdoors, my friends, uh, that's because I have my mask on and I'm away from my shield. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, I know our, 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 uh, at least our outdoor bulletins, and I'm warning you about the giving of the third grade Bible, but let's first, we have a tradition here, right, Sheila? About, uh, where'd Sheila go? Oh, there she is. <laughs> um, I thought you were sitting there. Um, she, she didn't want to sit next to Larry, that's what I really thought. Um, but uh, there were tradition here, right? But we uh, give the give the give the lambs from, from our from our tapestry up there to to folks after they have because they were baptized, that's how they got up there. When they start Sunday school, they receive those lambs. So I believe we have two folks. Do we who's presenting these lambs? Mary has them. Alright, Mary, come on up. You can use this if you need a mic. Can talk okay. You can talk. <laughs> Can um, Gage Woodward and Elise Wilson? Can you come up here? Sure. I 
these lambs were given to you when you were baptized, and now that you have started Sunday school, you get to receive them back. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we have one third grader who's going to be receiving Bible, a Bible today. Can they come forward? Bryce. Bryce Stilsey? All right, Bryce. And one of his parents, you want to, I need, you need either Al or Al. One of you needs to come So, well, as you brought Bryce here to receive the gift of baptism, we were in touch with some sacred responsibility to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the creeds, and the Ten Commandments, to place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture them in faith and prayer, so that your child, Bryce here, may learn to trust God, to proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world that God made, and work for justice and peace. Uh, you and his parents promised to help him grow in Christian faith and life. So let us pray. Today we will keep this literal word of one of those promises, to place in their hands the Holy Spirit. We pray as a congregation in the name of Jesus that you will encourage them to read, question, learn, love, and explore our holy Bible. Amen. Um, Mary here is going to. It's not her. It's not Mary's work. Um, Mary here is going to hand. Is going to now hand you L uh, the Bible, and then you can place it in Bryce's hands. But before you do that, before you hand over this gift of God, please note. Uh, that we're going to slide in here, which we didn't do. Uh, inside that Bible is a little scavenger hunt, and parents, or you, or Joan, or whoever can do this with Bryce, it's a fun way for him to explore the Bible. It's about lots of monsters in the Bible. Bryce, do you remember the monsters in the Bible? There's like <laughs> dragons, and weird things that have four heads, and like a thousand eyeballs. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's really, and apparently those are the good, those are the good kids. So, <laughs> the good guys. Um, I call some of the thousand eyeballs, some of they go, ooh. And they must have really good eyes. So, so you can do that, it'll be fun. Empower them to explore with the book on their own, in the church, with you, with their friends, and in the world. So, uh, Bryce, can you face your, your, your papa? All right. Uh, Al and God's people here, please repeat after me as Bryce here receives the Holy Scripture. Receive this Bible. Receive this Bible. Hear God's word with us. Hear God's word with us. Learn and tell its stories. Learn and tell its stories. Discover its mysteries. Discover its mysteries. Honor its commandments. Honor its commandments. Rejoice in its good news. Rejoice in its good news. May God's life-giving word inspire you. May God's life-giving word inspire you. Claim you. Claim you. And make you wise. And make you wise. We pray this in Jesus' name. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so go ahead and hand Bryce the Bible. Now, Bryce, I want you to use your Bible with your family right away. So again, there's that scavenger hunt in there. Uh, there's again all kinds of fantastic monsters and beasts and creatures in there. And I want you to follow them, okay? All right, well thank you very much. Thank you. Oof. I mean, I keep hitting this thing. The bishop just kept sort of standing here in the middle of it. Eventually, she sort of got over here. <laughs> All right. 
So my prayer this morning is that the Holy Spirit uses me so that you who are here, those of you who are watching and listening online, if there's any of you in the fellowship hall, and certainly, not last, not least, those of you who are worshiping outdoors with us, I want anybody that's hearing this, I pray that they hear the Lord's promise for you today. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This has been a really busy week. I sort of uh, wanted to take a moment to, to take a breath, but then I was running behind back there because that's been like the whole week. It's just one step behind. Actually, sorry, last couple weeks. Uh, it's been like that. But in a moment, reason why there's so much, reason why maybe I'm a little bit behind because there's so much going on here. There's so much life, so many things happening, and that's so exciting. And there's one more thing happening this morning that's a little different, and that is in a moment we're going to install our Sunday school staff. And that, that, that moment has put something on my mind, and it really put actually someone, another human being, who's been long dead on my mind. Uh, kids, and by kid I mean anybody of any age, so kids at heart, have you have heard of the playwright William Shakespeare? Have you heard of this person? Yeah? What about you, Gage? Have you heard of William Shakespeare? <laughs> well, since you're listening, Gage, so closely, uh, Shakespeare was an English playwright who died 408 years ago. <laughs> but he wrote some very famous plays that we've pro a lot of us in this room have probably heard of. Uh, Hamlet, King Lear, Othello, uh, Romeo and Juliet, and so, so many more. They're beautiful things, uh, but they sound different than than we're used to hearing. So I'm gonna put, instead of putting some Bible in your ear, I'm gonna put some Shakespeare in your ear this morning. Um, let's go ahead and do, I want you to listen. This is a monologue, I think Olivia's the character that gives this. It's from the, from the Shakespeare play, The Twelfth Night. Oh, what a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. A murderous guilt shows not itself more soon than love that would seem hid Love's night is noon. Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by maidhood, honor, truth, and everything, I love thee so that marg the all thy pride, nor wit nor reason can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reasons from this clause, for that I woo. Thou therefore hast no cause, but rather reason thus with reason fetter. Love sought is good, but given unsought is better. Did you guys understand that? Like, that was perfectly clear to you, right? <laughs> I think there were some rhymes in there. Something about love. I'm a, this is a little bit on my mind. I, I should sit note about Shakespeare. It's that some folks really think sort of the, the innovation and, and the way that Shakespeare used language and sort of, at least if it wasn't just Shakespeare, sort of what was going on in England at that time really inspired a flowering of the English language and so that we get the beautiful poetry that comes out of the King James Bible. Um, and, you know, in some ways I wish those folks in the King James Bible had the, the, the Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic text that we have for our Bible so they could have translated something a little more accurately, but still beautiful. I have Shakespeare, so it is the installation of our Sunday school teachers and Shakespeare, but really this got Shakespeare in my mind this morning because I got an email from a member not that long ago, and this member was going to join one of our educational staffs, and they were expressing to me, and I'm not going to name names, but they're expressing to me the, a hesitation because they were concerned that they weren't worthy that they maybe didn't understand things well enough. And the analogy that they used was that the Bible is like Shakespeare to them. And I thought, I th I've been thinking about this. And I, I responded, and, I, and they joined the ministry, and that's great. But I think that's a, that's, a, that's a fine analogy. That's a beautiful analogy. It shows a real deep understanding of the Bible to me. Let me give an example. Um, I, talk, I, read a, I read a little bit of a monologue from that play, the Shakespeare play, The Twelfth Night. So I remember, oh man, I'm, I'm getting old. I mean, not as old as some of you, but I'm getting old. 
Uh, but I remember in high school, I think it was between my sophomore and junior year, I was at like a month long science camp with the UW, right? So I got to be away from home for a whole month. Sorry, mom. Um, but it was great. Uh, <laughs> And one of the things we did one night is we went to American Players Theater. It was in the evening for a showing of the Twelfth Night, for a performance of the Twelfth Night. I don't know if that has to do with science, but this is a thing that we did. And I'll tell you this, I got the play that night. I understood it, right? The words, what happened is that the words meant something to the actors. I don't know if they knew all the words or what everything meant, but it meant something to the actors that night. And so it meant something to me. And there were a lot of, uh, I don't know, let's say adult jokes in that play. And they really, they really hit those, those jokes really well. It was really funny, you know, for teenage me. And um, yeah, but I re it really, it meant something to me because it meant something to them. You know. Second time, a few months later, maybe a couple months later, I was back in school and the English department in my high school was getting a, sh getting a field trip together and they were going to go see the Twelfth Night at American Players Theater and it was going to happen, I don't know, around 10 or 11 and it was going to, I'm like, oh, I really love that play, that's hilarious. So I made sure I had my grades right and everything so I could go. <laughs> and I went there and I'll tell you, it was like the actors were just reciting lines. They didn't mean anything to them, and it was pretty meaningless to me. It was like meaningless noise. I didn't know what the play was about anymore, and I, I didn't enjoy it. This, is, this happens in other cases with Shakespeare, right? I watched recently a film abdate, abdate, uh, adaptation of the film, of, of the play, of the Shakespeare play Macbeth. I'll tell you, the, it was, this, this movie was beautiful. And it was epic, and it had a lot of really famous actors who are real pros, right? They got paid some good money to do this thing. But the truth is, I had no clue what was going on. I've told you stories about my, about my, uh, my brother, my brother, David Meldman, uh, before in the past, my good friend. And David Meldman is a trained Shakespeare scholar and a veteran actor. And you know what? I've seen David Meldman perform in the play Macbeth in a public park in Evanston, Illinois. And I'll tell you, that was powerful stuff because the lines meant something to him. And so they were able to mean something to me. So what does this have to do with Sunday school? And, and again, I'm talking to, to us as potential teachers and I'm talking to us in, in this congregation even if you're not going to teach her, right? What does this have to do with this? Well, I, I wonder if this in one sense, gives us teachers and mentors, and I put myself in that category, some pressure on us, some responsibility, right? You know this, the, the stories you share and the teaching you will do, teachers, will only matter to our kids if they matter to you. And parents, that's a warning for you too, right? This, church thing, this Jesus thing that we do, it only ma probably start mattering to our kids first and foremost if it matters to you. Congregation, it's probably it's only going to matter to the kids that we have here if it matters to us. I don't know. That feels like, oh no, I can't mess up. I have lots of pressure. I got to reminded of James from a couple weeks ago where he's telling us we shouldn't be teachers because that's so stressful. <laughs> but you know what, folks? In our, in our text this morning and in this situation, this idea that this analogy of, of the Bible being like Shakespeare, there actually is the gospel in it. The gospel promise is there. Let me talk about this. Let me, let's go back. Let's back up and let's think about our God. Our God, is, our God has shared what God had. Everything that God has had, right? Shared it with creation. First by breathing over it and speaking to it, and even walking in it. Then God gave prophets and law and guidance. God just keeps giving. Then God gave God's own self in the form of Jesus Christ. And we know what happened with that. Walked around, got into some conflicts, was eventually crucified, was resurrected, but God gave God's self. But you know what, folks? God is still giving. 
God has left the Holy Spirit, and you know what? He's sort of left the Holy Spirit lying around. It's, it's lying around here at Decorah. It's lying around out there in the world. No, that's not right. It's not lying around. It's actually doing stuff, but left it here in the world. Okay? Here at DLC in the world. Left us the sacraments, left us the baptism, left us, left us communion, left us a lot, of, left us preaching. At least good preaching. To be a Sunday school teacher, or even a confirmation member, or a Christian parent or guardian, right, who takes those vows uh, at, at their kids' baptisms, right, and does so seriously, to be one of those is to do what Christians are empowered to do. That is to be God to each other. We learned that when we went through John earlier this year. And that, in this case, for the young people here, right? This is the case for the young people here. And church, I hope you hear me. I really hope you hear me. If you hear me, give me a beep with your horns or say yes. All right, there we go. It's really, I'm doing the sound check, you know, what? 43 <laughs> minutes into worship. <laughs> right? This is not just for the Sunday school teachers this morning, right? This is for all of us here. This is for me included, right? But being a teacher to our young people is as, is, is as simple as telling the stories that matter to you and demonstrating a way of seeing the world that you have heard and seen so many times. That's all it is, right? How is, it being, how is teaching being like God to each other? It is God just gave what God had. You just give what you have. Whatever you have is good enough. Right? That is part of the gospel promise, right? Just, just as God shared what, what God had, and that is enough. And whatever you have that is meaningful and matters to you in your relationship with God and with Christ, whatever that is, it is good enough. We heard in James this morning that you have, that when you draw near to God, so God draw, has drawn near to you. So in what ways have you drawn near to God? In what ways have you sensed God has drawn near to you? The gospel is that you sharing, that you sharing God, our parent, and God, the spirit, and God, the son, right, who is our God here at Decorah, Right? However you do that, it is good enough. It is, in fact, the only thing we can do or expect it to do. After all, if God cannot give more than God has, then how can we give more than we have? And that, again, is a blessing and a gift. Amen. Uh, we have some very special music from Mary Sang this morning. Uh, and so, yeah, it's amazing grace, my chains are gone.
beautiful. Thank you. If I sound a little muffled for those of you outdoors, it's because my mask is on and I'm away from my from the pulpit. I want to note before I call the teachers up here, my mic was off during the entire sermon, but when I asked for beep support, that they could hear me. So I love our new sound system. It that much takes me out. That's how sensitive. So, uh, teachers, coordinators, mentors for Sunday school, or if you are involved with confirmation and couldn't come on Wednesday, now's the time to be installed. confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I apologize, I don't have the prayer list. Oh, can one of our ushers snag that quick? Thank you so much. While we're waiting for that, is there anyone here who has anyone that you know is in need of prayer that we can pray for today? You can just say it out loud or you can wait while we're praying and, um, and add them in our prayer. Steve Word. Steve Word. Daniel Lee. And Daniel Lee. Uh, my ex-wife who is taking one last vacation before she starts uh, radiation treatment for her cancer. There is a name on here and I can't read it. Um, is it Nancy Salinas? Because I have bad yes. handwriting. <laughs> Nancy starting, it's going to have a cancer surgery about mid-October. We should pray for her until then. Okay, Nancy Salinas. Um, my son Perry, who's struggling, and his willingness. Decorah struggling with finances. James Dow family. Jimmy was killed Friday morning on Highway 14 in James Dow accident. Mm. Alice Lanzendorf. Steve Word. Daniel Leeds. And Pastor's former wife. Okay. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and now all in need. God of community, we pray for the church around the world. We pray for all ministers, including pastors, deacons, musicians, and worship ministers of every kind. We ask you to keep Bishop Joy Mortensen Weep strong in her ministry of leadership of our synagogue, our synod. To keep presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton strong in her ministry of leadership of our confession. And to keep Pastor Jamie Benson strong in her new ministry at Bethlehem in Portage. Unite us in our love for you. Help us overcome our divisions that we are encouraged to work together for your sake. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of creation, we pray for this hurting earth. Awaken us in us a new desire to care for this world and empower us to support agencies, organizations, and individual efforts to heal our environment. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of cooperation, we pray for nations of the world embroiled in conflict. Afghanistan, Mexico, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Sudan, Myanmar, Colombia, Venezuela, Arzikar, Arzibanzan, Somalia, Kenya, Congo, Algeria, Burkina Faso, Chad, Libya, Mali, Niger, Tunisia, Iraq, Nigeria, Cameroon, Syria, South Sudan, Mali, Mozambique, Tanzan Tanzania, India, Pakistan, Iran, the Gaza Strip, Israel, Lebanon, Palestine, Thailand, the Philippines, Turkey, Egypt, 
Central Africa, Ukraine, Bangladesh, North Korea, South Korea, Indonesia, Morocco, Sawari Republic, Angola, Peru, Senegal, Paraguay, and the United States, and any nation in conflict not named but known to you. Inspire leaders to listen to each other and work towards peaceful solutions to disagreements. Protect the vulnerable, especially children who cannot find safety in their home or country. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort, we pray for all who live with mental and physical illness. Help them find appropriate care. Bring healing and wholeness when the path forward seems bleak. Be there and celebrate and celebrate with those with blessing to celebrate and even care for those who have hurts hurt us in the past. We especially pray for Nancy Salinas, Perry, Decora Lutheran, the James Dahl family, Alice Lenzendorf, Steve Word, Daniel Leeds, Pastor's former wife. Tom Peterson. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for the young people of this congregation. Renew in us your call to welcome the children in our midst and to listen to the voices of the young people maturing into their adulthood. As they grow, strengthen their faith and our commitment to them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of consolation, we give you thanks for our loved ones who have died and pray for all who grieve today. Shine your grace on all your saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord and all God's people, say, Amen. 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 outdoor ushers as you exit the parking lot after worship today, or indoor worshipers, you can place those offerings in the basket near the entrances as you exit. Thank you for supporting God's mission and ministry here at the Torah with the resources that God has given you. With that in mind, let us pray and ask God to bless all of our offerings and gifts. Let's, let's, let's pray. Pray. Lord God, maker of all things, your goodness, and bless us with these gifts, ourselves,
You are indeed holy and almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all the drink, and said, this is the... This cup is the new covenant in my blood, and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Now let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, our Lord, hallowed be thy name. Your name be meal. This is the Lord's table and all are welcome. So we are using these fellowship cups here this morning. The body of Christ is in the top layer here at the very, at the very top. I want you to know that this wafer, this body of Christ, is the body of Christ and it's given for you. The blood of Christ in the cup beneath the wafer, the blood of Christ is shed for you. This is the Lord's table and the Lord's meal. It's not ours. So if you participate in Holy Communion in the past, then you are welcome to participate here today. What we're going to do is when uh, the ushers uh, dismiss you for worship, they will also give you uh, the communion elements, which they may want to come up and snag in a moment, and uh, and you can consume those elements as, as you leave here today. So when you do that, may the body and blood of Christ Jesus strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Well, people of God, you are Christ's body bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. 